good morning today we'll see about modulation so what is modulation we should before going to that we should know what is modulation see i thought of giving this chocolate to my friend i gave this i tried to give this to my friend while giving this to my friend what happened some dust particles added to this isn't it i thought of giving this chocolate to my friend now what happened before giving some dust particles added to this chocolate now what can i do i can cover this if i cover this chocolate and if i give this to my friend she would have got the real chocolate without any dust particles so this is how we can explain about modulation let us take this as our original signal this is our original signal it does not have any dust particles now while giving this original signal that is when we transmit this original signal as it is this is called as baseband transmission now what happens if you transmit the original signal as it is other frequencies will mix with this frequency like this dust particles other frequencies will mix with our original frequency so if you transmit as it is this baseband transmission and our original signal the receiver now let us take our receiver is here we have a receiver here and this is a transmitter he has transmitted uh, information so in the middle what happened this original signal he has received the signal but with dust particles isn't it the same thing if you transmit the signal as it is the receiver will receive the information but what happens here some other frequencies here we used to say this as a dust particles in electronics what we used to say is some other frequencies will mix with this original frequency so the receiver will receive the information but he will receive the information along with the dust particles now what we have to do is we have to cover this original information now we have covered this original information before transmitting and this process is called as modulation so we are going to transmit a signal if you transmit the original signal as it is this is called as baseband transmission the signal which we are transmitting without carrier is said to be baseband transmission now what is the drawback in this the other signals will mix with this signal our original signal will be get mixed with with the other signal and one more thing is if i am here that is a transmitter is here and if a receiver is here we can give this as it is but if it is to the long distance if you are transmitting the this information to the long distance what happens it is not possible to transmit the, this baseband signal that is our original information that is our chocolate now let us take this as the original information now i cannot transmit this to the long distance so what we are going to do is we are going to cover this so if you cover this so that the other signals cannot get mixed up dust particles cannot get mixed up with this that other signals are said to be noises so if a transmitter is transmitting a signal the receiver will receive the information without noise signal this is called as modulation and this carrier this cover is said to be carrier signal and this chocolate is said to be original signal this is what i'm going to i'm trying to give this to the friend but what happens the dust particles are added with this in order to avoid that i'm going to cover this original information with a cover and this is called as carrier signal which is going to carry this information carry this chocolate from a transmitter to the receiver and now if it is baseband transmission without carrier what happens we can transmit this the receiver will receive but with noise signal and also this is applicable only for the short distance if it is for long distance we cannot transmit this original signal as it is so what we are going to do is we are going to cover this original information by using a cover 
this is original information our chocolate is our original information which is low frequency signal always our modulating signal will be a low frequency signal so we are going to transmit a low frequency signal by using a carrier that is a high frequency signal because if it is going to carry a signal it should be it should have that quality that is quantity should be very high so that always the carrier frequency is high when compared to this original frequency we can say this as original frequency or we can say this as modulating frequency or we can say this as a message signal message signal modulating signal or original signal so it is covered by using a cover this cover is said to be carrier which is going to carry the information from a transmitter to the receiver now what are the drawbacks of baseband transmission by seeing this we can easily say the baseband transmission drawbacks are it cannot travel for a long distance so we cannot transmit the signal to the long distance and the next thing is it requires large height of antenna if you transmit this signal as it is it requires large trans uh, large antenna size then the next one is multiplexing is not possible if you use this multiplexing is not possible then the next thing let us go to the next thing now we have covered now what happens if this cover is not see here if it is not fixing to this what can we do can we change any properties of this original signal can we change any properties of this chocolate no what can we do is we can change the properties of this cover alone we should not change any properties or characteristics of this chocolate because we have manufactured a chocolate we have a original frequency which we wanted to transmit from a transmitter to the receiver now i wanted to give this chocolate now what i have to do is i have to make a cover which must have the capability to carry this original information from a transmitter to the receiver now what can i do instead of changing any properties of this chocolate i can change only the property the properties of this cover and that properties are said to be amplitude frequency or phase that is how we classify this modulating signal one is analog modulation and the another one is digital modulation so we can change any properties of the cover either we can increase the height or either we can increase the width so we can change any properties of this carrier but we cannot change any properties of the chocolate because this is my original information which i wanted to transmit which i wanted to give to my friend so we cannot change any of its properties so instead of changing the properties of this chocolate i i can make sure that my cover is has the all the capabilities to carry my chocolate so that is my original signal so this is what we call as modulation so modulation is defined as the process by which some properties or parameters of the carrier signal is varied so we have to change only the properties or parameters of the carrier signal in accordance with the instantaneous value of the message signal so according to this message signal we have to change this carrier this is what we call as modulation i hope you understand this so what is modulation if you transmit the signal now let us move on like electronics wise if we are if you want to transmit this original signal as it is this is called as baseband transmission what happens dust particles will add it that is noise other frequencies will get mixed with the original frequency in order to avoid that i am going to cover this by using a cover in order to avoid this what we are going to do is this low frequency signal will be covered with a high frequency carrier signal now what can we do this chocolate is not fitting to this cover now i can change any of the properties of this cover either the height or width or anything that is called as modulation technique so it is defined as a process by which some properties or parameters of the carrier signal is varied because if you vary the properties of this original signal then the receiver will not receive the original information as it is so we have to vary only the properties or parameters of this carrier signal this is called as modulation i hope you understand this now let us move on to the modulation topic what is modulation so it is defined as the properties it is defined by which some properties or parameters of carrier signal is varied so the always the carrier signal will have high frequency because it has to carry the low frequency original signal 
Now, what is the classification of modulating signal? We can classify it as analog and digital. Now, what and what way we are classifying this as analog and digital? We know if it is analog, we have continuous, and if it is digital, we know it is discrete. That is zeros and ones will be there. And this analog signal is again classified as continuous and pulse analog signal. Now, what is the difference between this continuous and pulse analog? If it is continuous, we will have this original signal that is our message signal and carrier signal will be analog in nature. So, both will be analog in nature. If it is pulse modulation, we have pulses. So, we have original signal as um, sinusoidal that is analog signal and our carrier will be pulses which is going to carry this original information will be pulses then again this continuous signal is classified as amplitude and angle modulation and this angle is classified as frequency and frequency modulation and phase modulation and we know that frequency modulation and phase modulation will also come under this continuous modulation why don't we use this frequency and phase here why you are using this angle here because the reason is if it is amplitude modulation we will get changes in the amplitude of the signal this is called as amplitude so we will get changes in the amplitude of the signal if it is frequency or phase we will get changes in the frequency of the signal that is our amplitude will be common and we will get frequency or phase and here we used to represent frequency as well as here we are going to represent that is in the time domain we are going to represent frequency as well as phase that is why it is written under angle modulation because while preparing for examination we will get a doubt why we are writing this frequency and phase um, under this angle why don't we write under this continuous because this also comes under the continuous modulation technique and continuous is classified as amplitude modulation that is am angle modulation this angle is classified as fm and pm and now we just now we said what is modulation so if it is amplitude modulation we can change the amplitude of the signal so where we get the changes in the amplitude of the signal if it is frequency or phase modulation so if it is frequency we will get changes in the frequency if it is phase will get changes in the phase of the signal and that is called as frequency modulation phase modulation and this is how our modulating signal is classified so your first unit that is uh, those who are preparing uh, for a b e c e c s e i t triple e so everybody will have your first unit is analog communication that is which consists of this amplitude modulation uh, frequency modulation and phase modulation then the next unit will have this digital modulation and every schemes now let us see what is amplitude modulation what is amplitude modulation listen now let us take this is our original signal which we are going to transmit this is our carrier signal let us take this is our carrier signal which we are going to transmit along with the original signal and this is said to be vm of t and this is said to be vc of t that is carrier signal and this is original signal that is message signal now what will be our output so in the output we will have this amplitude changed output so here we have positive negative and positive and here we have carrier signal this is our modulated waveform before that we had modulating signal and message signal this is our modulated waveform that is VAM of T this is our message signal this is our carrier signal this is our modulating signal here we have carrier plus our modulating signal carrier plus our modulating signal and this is our modulated wave this is our original signal and here we don't have perform any modulation so here we don't have any modulation and this is our carrier signal this is our modulating signal or we can say this as message signal this is our carrier signal and this is our modulated wave now let us see this before modulation we had modulating signal then we had carrier signal so we have transmitted this signal while performing amplitude modulation after modulation we will get this signal now observe this here we have and listen here we have this is positive and this is negative okay here we have performed modulation 
since here we don't have any modulating signal so we'll receive the same carrier signal here we don't have any modulation modulation we cannot perform any modulation because here we don't have any original signal since we have only carrier signal so we'll get only carrier signal here now after this so after this line we have both original signal as well as carrier signal now what happens if it is amplitude modulation we will get change only in the amplitude of the signal so we will get only changes in the amplitude of the signal that is why it is called as generation of am we can say this as amplitude modulation and we can also specify by using mathematical representation now what is modulating signal vm of t this is our modulating signal now we can represent this vm of t as vm sin omega mt this is our modulating signal now what is vc of t vc of t will be equal to vc sin omega ct now <coughs> excuse me this is our vm of t this is our vc of t now what is this vm and vc this vm vc represents amplitude of the signal so here we have vm that is modulating signal amplitude here we have vc that is carrier signal amplitude and what is this omega m omega c this omega m we know omega m will be is equal to 2 pi fm that is frequency of the modulating signal and what is this omega c omega c will be is equal to 2 pi fc and here this fc represents carrier signal frequency and this is our modulating signal this is our carrier signal now what happens after modulation we will have changes in the carrier signal amplitude isn't it after modulation just observe this diagram after modulation we have changes in the amplitude of the carrier now we can write which is equal to we have the same carrier signal plus we have changes only in the modulating signal therefore we can write this as which is equal to vc plus what is vm of t previously we have written that is vm sin omega mt this is our vam vam will be equal to because we have changes only in the vc we don't have any changes in the modulating signal now we can write vam which is equal to vc let us take this vc as common so we can write 1 plus vm by vc sin omega mt now what is this vm by vc we can write this as modulation modulating index that is modulation index of modulation index of am because it is amplitude modulation so represent that we have written here ma if it is mf that is modulation index of frequency if it is mp that is modulation index of phase modulation now what is vam so we can write this as which is equal to vc into 1 plus ma sin omega mt this is our vam now listen observe here this is our vam where we have vc plus ma sin omega mt but with respect to instant linear that is with respect to time if we see here whether we have only amplitude of carrier signal no we have the frequencies also now what we can write is vam of t that is instantaneous value of the signal previously what we have written is we have changes in the amplitude of the carrier signal in order to represent that we are writing this as vc plus vm sin omega mt but with respect to time because we have with respect to time vam of t which is equal to we can write this as vam into sin omega ct because here we have only amplitude of the signal but here we have frequency also we have frequency of the carrier signal therefore we can write vam of t will be equal to what is vam here vc into 1 plus m e sin omega m t into sin omega c t so this is how we have to represent this amplitude modulation signal now here this is our message signal that is vm of t this is our carrier signal vc of t and this is our vam of t that is modulating signal next observe this diagram we have a amplitude isn't it this is called as am envelope this is called as am envelope and this envelope will resemble same as our modulating signal here we have positive here we have negative here we have positive so this envelope will resemble same as this original signal and here we have carrier plus message signal that is why we have written here here we have changes only in the carrier but 
uh, amplitude now we have to represent this that it has also frequency and now we can write the same expression as let us continue here that is here we have written v a m of t which is equal to v c into 1 plus m a sin omega m t into sin omega c t we can write this as which is equal to v c sin omega c t plus m a sin omega m t into sin omega c t and we know that sin omega m t that is sin a sin b formula so sin omega m t into sin omega c t which will be equal to cos we can write this as omega c minus omega m t minus cos omega c plus omega m t but actually here we have plus in order to change this as omega c minus omega m why we are writing this as omega c minus omega m why don't we write this as omega m minus omega c because omega c that is our carrier frequency will be always a high frequency signal so we cannot write this as omega m minus omega c the frequency will never be in the negative so in order to avoid that we are writing omega c minus omega m therefore we can write this as v a m of t will be equal to v c sin omega c t plus here we have m a v c by 2 here we have m a o i m a v c m a m a v c by 2 and we can write this as cos omega c minus omega m t minus m a v c by 2 cos omega c plus omega m t and listen here this is our final expression where we have this is high frequency that is lower sideband because omega c minus omega m will be lower sideband and here we have omega c plus omega m that represents upper sideband frequency and this is our unmodulated carrier why we are saying this as unmodulated carrier because previously while transmitting the signal we had vc of t is equal to vc sin omega ct and even now we are having which is equal to vc sin omega ct now we can say this as unmodulated carrier where we are getting unmodulated carrier here we have unmodulated carrier because here we don't have any message signal so we will get after modulation also this unmodulated carrier along with two side bands one is upper side band and another one is said to be lower side band frequency and we can represent this in the frequency domain this is our frequency domain so this is amplitude and here we have lower side band and here we have carrier and here we have upper side band so what is upper side band and lower side band amplitudes m a v c by 2 and here we have m a v c by 2 and here we have carrier that is v c so here we have carrier signal v c and here it is m a v c by 2 and here we have m a v c by 2 and this is our carrier frequency <coughs> this is our lower side band frequency this is our upper side band frequency and this is frequency and now we can say that bandwidth what is lower sideband frequency fc minus fm what is upper sideband frequency fc plus fm so what will be the bandwidth of this now we have to find bandwidth so how can we find bandwidth bandwidth is given as which is equal to upper sideband frequency minus lower sideband frequency now what is upper sideband frequency we know it is omega c plus omega m so we can write this as fc plus fm minus what is lower sideband fc minus fm therefore we can write this as which is equal to 2 fm therefore bandwidth of the signal will be 2 fm now we can say the bandwidth is too high isn't it bandwidth will be too high and if you transmit this as it is this is called as the uh, am dsb fc that is amplitude modulation double sideband full carrier why we are saying this is amplitude modulation double sideband full carrier because here we have this is amplitude modulation here we have two sidebands that is upper sideband as well as lower sideband so that is double sideband and full carrier so we are transmitting the we are getting the same full carrier that's why this modulation technique is called as am double sideband dsb fc and what is the drawback in this since here we have two sidebands isn't it both the sidebands are going to carry the same information so we can suppress any one of the sideband and if you are suppressing any one of the sideband then it is called as am ssb that is am single sideband if you have dsb that is double sideband 
or we can say this also as conventional am technique so everything are same if you are if they are asking in question as am that represents am dsb fc or if you are getting question as am conventional that is that also represents am dsb fc now what is the major drawback in this here we have upper sideband lower sideband so both the sidebands are going to carry the same information so in order to avoid that we can suppress any one of the frequency and the suppression technique is said to be single sideband because we are going to transmit only one sideband so that is called a single sideband suppressed carrier where we are going to suppress any one of the carrier <clears throat> that is our next technique so up to this is our am dsb fc and up after this you have am voltage distribution and am power distribution let us continue this here we have a signal this is our after transmission this is our modulated signal isn't it this is our modulated waveform and now this is time and here we have vm and here we have vm this is one of vm and this is modulating signal <coughs> here we have v maximum which is equal to vc plus vm this is plus v maximum vc plus vm and here we have minus v maximum which will be is equal to minus vc minus vm and here we have vc plus vm sin omega mt and here we have plus v minimum which is equal to vc minus vm and here we have minus v minimum which will be equal to minus vc plus vm and the total is said to be total signal is said to be v maximum and here we have vc now i guess this diagram will be visible yeah this is our amplitude modulated waveform am for calculating this modulation index so how can we write this modulation index v maximum now from this figure we can write v maximum is equal to vc plus vm we can write v maximum is equal to vc plus vm and what will be v minimum which will be is equal to vc minus vm v minimum will be equal to vc minus vm v maximum is vc plus vm that is from the v figure we are writing v max vc plus vm v minimum vc minus vm now we can write this as 2 vm which is equal to v maximum minus v minimum so we from this we can write vm which will be equal to v maximum minus v minimum by 2 so 2 vm that is twice that of vm will be from the figure so you can observe the figure twice that of vm which will be equal to maximum minus minimum here we have 1 vm here we have 1 vm so 2 vm will be equal to here we have v maximum here we have minus v minimum so we can write vm is equal to v v max minus v minimum by 2 now what will be vc vc is equal to v max minus vm here we have v maximum so we from this equation we can write vc is equal to v max minus vm now let us substitute this v maximum value so which will be equal to that is v max minus what is this vm v max minus v minimum by 2 now we can write vc will be equal to v max minus v max by 2 then plus v minimum by 2 therefore we can write vc is equal to v max plus v minimum by 2 this is our vc now what we did is from the figure we have written what is v max v minimum and from this we have find out what is vm and vc now previously we have written what is modulation index that is ma which is equal to vm by vc now let us substitute what is vm so vm is equal to v maximum that is 1 by 2 v maximum minus v minimum divided by 1 by 2 here we have v max plus 
V minimum. Therefore, M A which is equal to that is modulation index of A M will be equal to V max minus V minimum by V max plus V minimum. This is our modulation index. Now, what is the percentage modulation? Percentage modulation index which will be equal to modulation index into 100. Therefore, percentage MA that is percentage MA will be equal to V max by V minimum divided by V max bar plus V minimum into 100. Now, this is our percent modulation. So, after this is your AM modulation that is amplitude modulation. Hope you understand. If you like this, subscribe, share and support. We will meet in the next video. Thank you.